Did you know that potatoes were once considered a trash food in France? Now they are one of the most prized, and when combined with fresh leeks, they are even more amazing. We're making leek and potato soup. Hey guys, if this is your first time tuning in, let us know you're out there by giving us a thumbs up below and then hit that subscribe button over here in the left corner to make sure you never miss a video. Now let's start cooking. The soup of the day is cream of potato and leek soup, or in French, potage pomentier. Uh, this soup got its name, uh, the French name, from uh, a, a pharmacist, French pharmacist, Antoine Augustine Pomentier, who was actually interned in a German prison camp in the late 18th century. And uh, at the time, potatoes in France were considered just trash food but that is actually how they were sustained in the prison camps. And when he came back to France, he introduced the, the potato and it became a, a great way to fight the famine that was going on in the late 18th century and uh, became known as a, as a French soup. So that is potage pomentier. There's also a, a cold version of this and you might know the name vichyssoise. And vichyssoise is basically the same thing as potage pomentier, but it's, uh, it's a cold version. So of course our ingredients for this potage pomentier are, uh, I've got about two and a half pounds uh, or one kilo of uh, potatoes, freshly cut potatoes. And the way that I've done these is I've, I've peeled them and I've sliced them lengthwise and then cut them in half moons, about a quarter inch half moon. And you want them to be pretty much all the same size, all right? Uh, we've got uh, some leeks as well, and I probably have two to three leeks, just the white, mainly the white part. There's a little bit of the, the green here, but uh, mainly the white part of the leeks. And we've just got those soaking in water. Leeks are very, uh, can have a lot of dirt entrapped in them, so we've got them uh, rinsing and uh, soaking in water until we're ready to use them. And we've got our base of onions, and it's just one medium onion that I've sliced up, and a little bit of butter. That's what we'll start our mixture with. And we'll do a bouquet garni. And I think I've shown you before how the bouquet garni works, but in this case, uh, if you don't have uh, cheesecloth or muslin, uh, you can use the green part of the leek and place your bouquet garni. In this case, I've got a fresh bay leaf, uh, some, a sprig of thyme, and a couple of sprigs of rosemary. And we're just gonna put that inside the um, leek leaf. We're going to roll it up and starting from one end we'll just wrap it around the leek and on the other end we'll bring that part down and we'll tie it together and that will work for our bouquet garni. Okay, and uh, the liquid that we're using today is a chicken stock. This is a homemade chicken stock. You, of course, can use a bouillon or you can use the box chicken stock. Uh, I always think the homemade chicken stock is better, but we've got about a liter of that. We're gonna use that to cover, so we may or may not use all of it or we may add a little bit of water to it. And then we're gonna finish our soup with a little bit of cream, just heavy whipping cream. And um, then for garnishing, we're gonna chop up some fresh chives and we're going to pan sear some uh, pancetta, some uh, w uh, wonderful pancetta. And of course you could use bacon for this, but um, there's really a pretty big difference in the texture and the flavor of real pancetta when you fry it and we'll we'll talk about how to fry this because it's it needs to be done nice and slowly to uh, render all the fat and to get it as crispy as possible so those are our ingredients and let's get started well to get started we are melting our butter in our um, dutch oven and now we'll just put our onions in and our leeks And we are going to sweat those gently. 
And what that means is that they just kind of get to roll around in this hot tub until they're all sweaty and soft and translucent. And when it gets to that point, we'll be ready to move to the next step. I'm going to add just a little bit of um, sea salt to kind of get the process going as well as doing just a little bit of pre-seasoning for the entire thing. So we'll let these sweat probably five to seven minutes and we'll move to our next step. Okay, our leeks have uh, sweated and as you, as you can see, it looks like about a third of the volume that we had earlier, but they are nice and soft, translucent, no color on them. And so now we can add our potatoes. And I want to mention that uh, for this soup, probably the best potatoes are either uh, fingerling potatoes or um, Yukon Goals. Um, in this case, I've used uh, the ones I can find here locally. And they're really, uh, in France, potatoes are deemed, uh, you know, baking potatoes, frying potatoes, uh, potatoes for puree. That kind of thing so these are kind of a general purpose potato and um, so we're gonna put those in there and we'll let those get nice and nice and buttery and just get a little bit of get them mixed in with the leeks and one of the things I didn't mention earlier is that we um, had the potatoes uh, resting in, 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 in water. I did I drained the potatoes, but I left it in the in a large pot here because we may need this water. This is the nice starchy water that the potatoes were sitting in. If we if we need to add a little bit of wetness to uh, the pot after we get our stock in, then we can use that nice starchy water from the potatoes. So now we're going to just pour in our stock, our chicken stock to cover and we pretty much use the entire liter of chicken stock we'll pour that in we'll insert our bouquet garni and one of the things that you can do if you'd like to be clean is just take a pastry brush and clean the in the, the sides of your pot and really it, it's it not only serves the purpose of of being clean but it also prohibits anything from drying and burning on the side of your pot thereby uh, changing the flavor of your of your of your soup and this is the case in whatever you're doing in a in a uh, pot like this whether it be chicken stock or stews or soups or uh, chili whatever just always keep the side of the Dutch oven or the pot uh, cleaned and you will have a better result. All right, we're going to let that, we're going to bring that to the boil. Once it comes to the boil, we'll turn it down to simmer and then we'll cover it and we'll partially cover it about like that and just let it simmer for 30, 20, 25, 30 minutes till, real, till everything is very, very soft. Hey everybody, it's Walter from Artistic Gourmet Adventures. My wife Kim and I own this unique small group tour company where we host groups of 6 to 12 guests for one week luxury adventures in beautiful locations throughout Europe and the United States. I have the privilege of being the adventure chef, creating and preparing daily gourmet meals for our guests. So in this video series from our cozy home kitchen here in the beautiful Loire Valley of France, we will demonstrate a wide variety of recipes from culinary classics to originals, as well as covering professional kitchen techniques for the home chef. For more information on Artistic Gourmet Adventures, check our website, linked in the description below. Okay, our mixture is uh, now, it's come to the boil and now I've just turned it down to a simmer. And so when I say simmer, I don't know if you can see the little bubbles there, that's really what we want. We don't want a rapid boil, we just want that, that nice little simmer and now we're just going to cover the pot and i like to cover it partially and uh, just like that so taking a look at our pancetta 
Our pancetta is, uh, I've actually got it in a, starting it out in a, in a cold, non-stick pan. And pancetta is, uh, of course, it's the Italian version of, of bacon, but it's very thin and it's salt cured. Um, so it doesn't really, and it has fat in there that needs to be rendered. But the best way to do that and to have it come out crisp is to do it very slowly over low to medium heat. So that's what we've got. We've got our fire on a medium. I may turn it up just a little bit just to get it started. And we're just going to let that sit there and it'll start rendering in probably three or four minutes. And then we'll take another look at it. Okay, our pancetta is now starting to render. Uh, we've had it on probably a medium high heat for, I would say about three minutes and you can, you can just kind of see where it's starting to render some of the fat. And uh, so now I've actually turned it down just a little bit more because we really don't want it to burn. It can burn quite easily. So again, the key is to cook it very slowly so that it takes its time and it renders the fat and still continues to crisp up the actual meat portion. And we haven't, we haven't turned this yet and we won't turn it for probably another three or four minutes. Okay, again, pancetta has been going for probably three minutes here. And if you can see this, you can see, you can literally see the fat as it renders. You see how it, it turns white right in here. And like this is clear in a second, that's going to turn white. And when it, uh, as it, as it starts to render all the fat, that's what happens is it, it turns white because it's, it's actually cooking. And I can't stress enough, don't be tempted to turn the fire up and rush this because if you do, it's just going to burn the meat and not render the fat. And as you can see, it's getting nice and rendered on one side. Okay, we've given this about another minute and a half. And as you can see, it's starting to really kind of brown and, uh, and render here. So now I think it's time for us to turn it. Let's just see. Yes, look, it's, it's nice and rendered on the opposite side. So this cooking time, it'll, probably, it'll vary a little bit as uh, depending on your, the pan you're using and your heat. But now, uh, and it's starting to smoke a little bit. I'm just going to move it off just a second here. But what a wonderful aroma that's coming off this pancetta. And can you see how just beautiful and evenly it's, it's cooked here? Our pancetta is now rendered and looks like it's fully cooked. So we will take it off. It will cool down and uh, it'll get crispy and we'll be able to use it for our soup. Okay, to wrap up our potage pomantier, we are going to finish it with the beautifully crisped pancetta that we just finished cooking. So we'll crumble that up as well as our uh, freshly picked chives from the garden. And let me just say just a little bit about what we've done with these chives. We grow, we grow most of our herbs here at, at our house. And even when we travel, we will take the herbs with us and so what we'll do is we'll pick them. And this is a trick that I learned from my trusty assistant and good friend, Glenda. Um, if you will just pick those herbs and wrap them in a wet paper towel, uh, they will last a lot longer than if you didn't do that. So we will now just chop up our chives. And again, it helps having a very sharp knife when you're doing this because we do want a nice uh, petite chop on this. So we'll just do that. And I know that there are all kinds of little gadgets that you can get to do this kind of thing. Little scissors that will chop it up for you, that kind of thing. But uh, it's also nice just to be able to do it yourself and have a nice chop on your chives. Okay, our chives are finished and um, it's always helpful to have a nice little bench scraper when you're doing any kind of chopping or uh, doing anything with vegetables just to be able to to clear your your bench and now we'll just take those and 
those are ready to go. We'll set those aside. And now for our pancetta. It's nice and crispy, and it's really the easiest way to do this is by hand. So we're just gonna crumble it by hand. You could use a rolling pin and some paper towel and, and that kind of thing to do this, but it's easier just to take them and do it by hand like that. Oh, what a great smell. Okay, and same thing using our bench scraper. We'll just place them in our bowl. And let's just plate our soup. And then plating, it's always nice to have, um, just use the lid of the vessel that you have cooked the soup in to keep you from making a big mess. All right, and now we simply just spread some of our pancetta across and let's finish it with a drizzle of our chives. And I don't know about you, but you can never have too many chives, so we'll just finish that way. And there we have it, a leek and potato soup or potage parmentier. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more, give us a thumbs up below and hit that subscribe button, it's free. And ring the bell if you wanna be notified as soon as we release a new video. Also, let us know in the comments if you have any special recipe requests. We really appreciate you tuning in. See you next time.